So for this project, I wanted to improve the design I was using for uh, my slider. Uh, the design I had before wasn't really the easiest to carry around because it was so heavy. And the uh, cart that I was using, this is a new one, the old one just sat on top of the rails. And so if you picked up the cart or the rails to move them at all, then you had the risk of this falling off. Um, with this design, you don't have to worry about it falling off because it has uh, bearings on the top and bottom of the rail. Um, so I used basically the juice link slider design and I took a piece of conduit. So this is just electrical con conduit. And basically I drilled through, I divided into uh, six, six pieces. So you've got your halves and then you've got your quarters, but I went to six. So then you need to drill a hole straight through one of those six and then you take another hole and you drill it through the other one right next to it. So basically you end up with something that looks like this. And as you can see, we've got a nice anchor point for our bearings. And so you're going to do that to both ends. Of this piece is oh, about only about six inches uh, long. So it's relatively short. And then the center is going to be where you're going to actually mount the head to your tripod um, so you can actually put the camera on top of this and that's just drilled through the center there and so once you've got those holes drilled you need to take pieces of threaded rod like this and those threaded rod pieces are going to fit through the conduit and then you're going to attach bolts onto or I'm sorry nuts onto both the uh, ends of it and then these are just nylon spacers um, you can get them for pretty cheap and I actually cut them in half they were inch long um, so I cut them down to a half inch long um, about just about and then you're gonna put your bearing on there and then you're gonna put a locking nut on the end of it and I only use locking nuts on one side so this is a non locking nut and this side has a locking nut um, and that's all the way all the way around there's one locking nut on each side um, and so what this does is this makes it so that your cart can fit onto your rail and when it fits on the rail it's going to have a top and bottom bearing so it won't be able to fall off if you tilt the uh, rail upside down so it's grabbed snugly onto the rail and so this design was really pretty simple to make um, it's just really important that you get the holes drilled through straight so using a drill press really helps um, if you have that available to you if not you can try to do it with the drill but I'd recommend using a drill press because uh, if you don't have something lined up right, then your dolly's going to be uh, not square. And so when you put it on the railing, you're going to have some wobble in it, and you don't want to have any wobble in it when you're sliding it back and forth along the rail. Okay. So for this rail here, what I'm using is just uh, conduit. Again, it's the same thing that I used for the actual dolly cart. Um, so you can just buy one piece of that, and then you can cut it up and use it for multiple things for this project. Um, and then we're also using PVC pieces for the ends and the feet that I have on this. So this is just a PVC T, um, and that's what the whole entire rig sits on. So that goes on the ground like that. And here we have our completed piece, as you can see. Um, it's basically just painted black. So that would go onto the bottom right here like this. And then what we have attached to that is another piece of PVC. I don't know if you can see this. Um, we need spacers to go in between so that they can connect and so when we put this together what this looks like is you're going to take your bottom foot piece and you're going to just push it into this portion and so now you have your base and this piece fits right onto here like that and you would push it in. Um, for the actual joining pieces for the conduit, I'm using conduit for this because it's metal and not PVC so it's less likely to flex um, when it has some weight in the middle of the track. If you use just PVC, you risk uh, there being some flex, and so when your camera gets to the middle of the track, if you have a heavier camera, like I do, it's going to flex the track down. You'll be able to see that in the video, and you don't want that. So the conduit will resist that because it's an actual uh, metal. So for the conduit to connect to the PVC, because there's no joint um, that will connect the two, the actual conduit is too small to go around the outside of a piece of PVC like this and uh, it's too big to go inside one of the, the uh, connecting pieces uh, then I actually decided to go with 
Uh, this is a piece of just irrigation pipe, and it's threaded originally. It's kind of stuck really well in here. Um, but what I did was I filed down the threads until they would actually fit inside the conduit. And then once they were filed down to the point where they would fit inside, I just tapped it into the conduit so it slides in like that real nice and neat. And it's actually pretty a pretty uh, snug fitting right there. So you don't really have to worry about much uh, wobble, as you can see. It's a snug fit. And all I did was file that down. And this is the shortest piece that you can get in the uh, irrigation um, pipe. And it is threaded on both ends. Um, it's only about, I'd say, two inches long overall. So it fits uh, about an inch into here, and then there's another inch and a little bit more sticking out this side. Uh, so that's what I decided to use for that, and it worked out quite well. You may notice that I also drilled holes through all my fittings where they join into each other. And I did this because I didn't want to glue anything together. So instead of gluing, I'm just using these screws. And what I do is I just put them through. And so they fit all the way through this, come out the other side, and then I was just putting a nut onto the end of them and then screwing that down pretty snug. And the reason I wanted to do this was because I wanted the uh, entire rig to be able to be broken down to be pretty flat if I needed to. And this allowed me to do that as well as disassemble and change pieces if I needed to replace any parts or if I wanted to exchange some pieces for longer por uh, parts. And this, with this design, if I wanted to, I could take these and I could put a longer piece of PVC in between the two and that would let me get higher up off the ground um, if I needed to. So that's just another feature that I kind of built into it. Um, so that's how that assembles. Um, and I'll go ahead and put this back together and you can see that it's uh, pretty simple to put together and it's relatively cheap. Conduit's only going to be about five bucks. PVC pieces all together are going to be about 20 bucks. Uh, the bearings are probably the most expensive thing because uh, if you don't buy them online then you have to buy a set of rollerblade bearings and they come with the wheels usually and so that's going to be about $35. All in all this rig was still under $100 for just the basic non-motorized design. So that includes the cart and then the two rails uh, for the railing assembly. Okay, so now we're going to talk about uh, what you need to do if you were interested in motorizing this rig. Um, so instead of just having the cart slide along the top of the track, uh, or on the track, we're going to actually have a motor pull it along the track. And so to do that, you need to do uh, two things. One, you need to figure out how you're going to get your string attached to this. And for this rig on this side, I'm just using this uh, bearing wheel, which is from a sliding door you can get at uh, Home Depot. It's uh, not too expensive. It's only about seven bucks, I think. Um, and it comes in a two pack, so you'll have two. All you need is one, though. And so one of these is going to go on this side right here at this mounting point. And these are the same screws that you would be using to hold, uh, or I'm sorry, the same bolts you're going to be using to hold the piece together. So you can reuse this one. It'll be long enough to go through here. And then for the inner mount, um, this is just a threaded end piece that I got off of another pulley. Um, and so that's what's going through the center here. Uh, you could use just the uh, screw if you wanted to and put it through here like that. Um, but you will need to space it with some washers on one side because it's going to be too long to uh, go through to the pipe and then be tight on the bearing. And you want it to be tight on the bearing. So you're going to have to do that. And so this is just going to go through here like that. And then you're going to take your washers and you're going to put your washers on this end. And once you have all of your washers on it, you can see that it sits flush now below the uh, ends of the screw there. And then you're going to feed your screw up through the bottom. And then you're going to put the wheel on top here. And so that's going to thread up. And then you're going to thread this down on top. And so that'll mount your wheel for one end of the pulley to right here. And then the string will be going around that and to the other end which is where we'll have our servo mounted, which is going to act as the motor for the motorized version. Um, so down here at the other end, we have mounted our servo. Um, I'm just holding this on here with zip ties. Uh, it can be mounted better, but I found for the time being, it's just fine with the zip ties. They hold in place fine because all the tension is going to be pushing that direction um, and pulling on it. Um, so this is just a cheap 
twenty dollar servo that I got, um, and it's uh, uh, basically it has continuous rotation. So that means that it can spin uh, continuously in one direction or the other. And what I'm using to control it is just an RC uh, receiver down here, uh, and basically a speed control. And it's just got a battery strapped to it. So all this plugs together, and we can control it with uh, the RC remote from the RC car that I've sabotaged for this. Um, and basically, it's pretty easy to do. Plug it in, flip it on, and you now have control with the RC car remote, or you can control it with the speed adjustment. Um, and so if you want to do continuous, you can just turn this up and you've got your continuous speed, so you don't have to fiddle with the actual steering and hold it. And so that's the power for the bearing, or for the uh, servo and the drive for the control for the motor. And so that sits at one end. Um, and then we have our open bearing that just spins at the other end for the string. And I'm just using regular piece of string right here. And that will go around the servo like that. And then this will go to the cart. And I'll show you how we're mounting it to the cart in just a second. Okay, so here we have our cart. And as you can see, it slides back and forth really smoothly. And if you go to pick it up, oh look, it's not going to come off of the rail because it's got a bottom bearing as well. So that's the safety feature that we've added with this design. Um, and then, so you're going to take your string right here, you're going to loop it around the bearing on that end. And then on this end, we have our servo. So you're going to loop around the servo on this end. And then, to get it to attach to the cart, what I'm going to do is just take a bolt like this. Um, it's just a screw, really. And then we're going to put it through a hole that I've drilled. And this is just a piece of, believe it or not, IKEA cutting board. Um, it's quite easy to work with because it's so easy to cut. And it's strong because it's plastic. It's got a little bit of flex to it. Um, and it works perfectly for this. Uh, but you could really use uh, even, say, a piece of wood for that. So we've got that one screw right there gone through the hole that we drilled. And then we're going to just put one of these nuts on the end of it. And so that'll secure it in place on this side. And then we're going to take a second one right here. And we want the tension to be somewhat strong on this because you don't want it to slip on the servo when the servo is turning. Um, and with more weight on this uh, slider, it's going to want to slip more. So you want to make sure that you have the string tight enough. So what I've done is just looped it right here, and I can actually pull the tension on this one until I get it to the desired uh, tension that I want, and then I can tie it off. So we're going to put it around this. Go ahead and slide that one down, and then we'll put another bolt on the bottom of that, or another nut on the bottom of that. Screw it in. And then you want to make sure that it's not going to move. See, there we have it. It's pretty sturdy. And then you just want to tighten up your string to make sure it's not going to slip. And you can do this several different ways. I find that if you just do this and then clamp down the bolt like that, it's a very small bolt, and then screw it in, it's actually not going to slip anywhere, and it's pretty snug. Um, this one's still pretty loose, but for a flat turn, it's probably all right. Um, you can make it tighter if you need to. And that's going to be the actual cart mounted to it, as you can see. And now I can show you a few shots that we've done with this and how it actually moves along the track.